Yeah. It's a play upon the IQ, man. I'm back, man. Some more of their reaction is. Um, I had someone from Canada. So it was like, yo, you only looking at Toronto stuff. You only looking at this. Hey, I'm only looking at what y'all saying, but I say that to say that. So he kept hitting me, hitting me, hitting me. Like, yo, react to BC, the other side of Canada. I guess British Columbia or Canada. I don't know. BC gang war. He said it's a whole nother side. Of, um, so 2021, war in the 604. Let's see. Yeah. An unscheduled news conference from police with a message for the public. Richmond, BC. We have zero regard for you, for me, for everyone else. The risk police say is high right now. Damn. Because they're committing these these senseless acts of violence in such a brazen way in such a public area, it puts all of us at risk. These they, they have it on camera. Make no mistake about it. Are vying for control of the drug trade. That turf war has led to a rise in shootings. Welcome back, guys. So it's been all over the news. There's a gang war currently playing out in the streets of BC, with at least 15 gang-related murders in the province's lower mainland since last Christmas. The murders have mostly been targeted hits, often broad daylight shootings in very public places. We're talking restaurants, malls, and even airports. The victims have included airports. everyone from low to high-ranking members of BC's most infamous gangs, including the Brothers Keepers, the United Nations, and the Red Scorpions. But although the violence has been going on for almost six months, it continues to spiral out of control, with the last victim claimed just on May 13th. Police are saying that we may now be witnessing the next episode of the 2009 gang war. In this video, we'll take a look at this new and emerging gang war. So, let's get into it. There are three major factions involved in the current gang war. First, there is the United Nations gang and their associates, including the surviving members of the Daft Ray crime group. Second, there is the Wolf Pack, the Wolf Pack is an alliance of different gangs, including the Independent Soldiers, Red Scorpions, and the New Blood and Blood Out Gang, or Bebo for short. Third, there is the new faction led by the Brothers Keepers, or BK for short, who have allied with the Hells Angels from the Motorcycle Gang's Hard Side Chapter. Together, these three factions, the United Nations, the Wolf Pack, and BK, are responsible for the violence we are now seeing in BC. So the current BC gang war unofficially started on December 27, 2020. On that day, 19-year-old Red Scorpion Harmon Singh Daisy was found shot to death in Sir. Police said Daisy was targeted. The very next night, a 14-year-old boy and alleged BK affiliate named T. Kill Willis was killed in Sir. Willis was getting out of a taxi when he was shot dead in what police say was a targeted hit, retaliation for Daisy's murder. But things escalated extremely quickly after Gary Kang was murdered a week later on January 6th. Kang, who was a high-profile gangster and key member of Bebo, was living yeah, at his yeah. parents' home in Surrey while awaiting sentencing in connection to a 2018 drug and weapons investigation. Kang, his brother Sam, their parents, and their uncle were all charged in that investigation. Gary and Sam's other brother, Randy, had already been murdered two years earlier as yeah. part of the ongoing BK and Bebo conflict. Gary Kang's death rocked the BC underworld. Tributes quickly flooded in on social media from his friends and supporters, including Bebo-affiliated rapper Lolo Lansky, whose Instagram posts caught the attention of a major local newspaper. However, rival BK gangsters also flocked to social media to celebrate and mock Kang's death. A BK member named Little Man posted a comment on one of Kang's friends' Instagram saying, quote, What's a leg shot when your OG just got slumped little kid? Little Man, who goes by the rap name 32 times, then posted a tribute to deceased BK founder Gavin Gruel, with the caption, Rest in power, and, we cut the head off the snake. But Little Man's celebrations would be short-lived. His cousin, Anis Muhammad, was murdered the very next day as retaliation for the Kanku. Muhammad, who was 29 years old, used to be affiliated with the United Nations, even being arrested with high-ranking United Nations gangster Jujar Singh Kun Kun in a 2011 drug investigation, but later became affiliated with BK and the Wolf Pack. According to police, Muhammad was heavily involved in the drug trade at the time of his death, and more back and forth killings followed Muhammad's death. Two days later, 28-year-old United Nations gangster Dil Raj Johal would be gunned down. Johal, who was originally affiliated with BK, before Should switching be. sides to the United Nations, was shot and killed in Richmond. Two weeks later, a United Nations affiliate named Arshdeep Singh would be killed. Singh, who was an international student police say got caught up in the drug trade, was fatally shot while sitting in a parked car. Less than a week later, Wolfpack gangster Chris Kenworthy was killed in a targeted Damn. shooting in Burnaby. Kenworthy was well known to police and had served time in prison for killing a Surrey drug dealer in 2006 when he was only 17 years old. One month later, brothers Joe Bin and Chad and Dinsa were found dead inside of a burning building in Richmond. 
Police investigators said it appeared the brothers were murdered, and that their death was likely part of the ongoing gang war. However, police didn't state which faction the brothers belonged to. By March 2021, the war had reached its current halfway point. But things didn't begin to cool down, they actually heated up, as more high-profile gangsters would be taken out. The next to go was Harb Dali Wolf. Harb, and his two brothers Shrek and Munander, are high-ranking gangsters in the BK. Harb was the middle brother, and had already been shot multiple different times, including in October 2017 and December 2018. Munander, who was the youngest, also survived a shooting in March 2019. In 2011, the family's home was even targeted, and their sister was almost shot while sitting in their driveway. At that time, in 2011, police told the media that they had at least 136 interactions with Shrek Dali Wall, and at least 42 with Harp. But the Dali Wall brothers weren't always part of the BK, and were originally aligned with the Red Scorpions. Shrek Dali Wall's name even came up in a drug investigation connected to Jared Bacon, in which police claimed Shrek financed a cocaine deal for the Bacon brother. But, at some point, the Dolly Wall brothers switched sides to the BK. Hard and Shrek were captured switch. in this now infamous picture attending the funeral of Hell's Angel member and BK ally, Simon de Grey Wall, in 2019. Grey Wall was a key figure in bringing together the BK and the hard side chapter of the Hell's Angels. In the picture, you can also see another high-profile BK gangster, Tyrell Kusnell, walking alongside the Dolly Wall brothers. Kusnell is currently in jail for shooting Randy and Gary Kang, the day after Hard Dolly Wall was shot in October 2017. Gary survived that shooting, but Randy died. Harp Dolly Wall was shot and killed in a targeted hit on April 17th. Harp, Shrek, and some friends were outside a restaurant in Cole Harbor when an alleged hitman shot and killed Harp. The hitman, Francois Joseph Gauthier, then tried to run away, but was chased down the street and stabbed in his eye. Mm. Police found Gauthier near the crime scene Seven and arrested him for the hit on Dolly Wall. The aftermath of the shooting was also captured on cell phone camera. In the clip, you can see Shrek Dali Wall screaming out in agony, as first responders fail to revive his younger brother Harp, who's laying on the ground shot. Damn, that nigga big too. They can't even really handle him. Just like Gary Kang, the hit on Harp Dolly Wall rocked the BC underworld. In the 25 days after Dolly Wall's death, there have been at least six more gang murders. The first was the murder of 20-year-old named Bailey McKinney, who was killed two days later while playing basketball at Town Center Park. Police say McKinney was known to them, and was facing serious charges, including unlawful confinement, kidnapping, firearms and trafficking charges at the time of his death. Three days later, longtime United Nations associate and ex-MMA fighter, Todd Guenberg, was gunned down outside the front doors of the Langley Sports Looked like an MMA fighter. Guenberg was an established player in BC, owned several businesses, and sometimes even did collections for the Hells Angels. Then, on May 1st, 29-year-old correctional officer Bikram D. Prandawa was gunned down in the busy parking lot of the Scottsdale Center. Damn, they killed the Police believe Randawa was targeted, but say the motive is unclear, and that there's a possibility he was a mistaken target. A bystander also captured the apparent killer running to a getaway car. Damn. The murder of the correctional officer in broad daylight made it undeniable Damn. there was a gang war in progress. A week after Randall's death, 19-year-old Tony Dalipi was killed after being shot in broad daylight while leaving a vape store in Burnaby. The incident was also caught on camera. The most brazen shooting in the gang war then happened the very next day when, on May 9th, United Nations gangster Carmen Greywell was shot and killed on the sidewalk outside the International Departures Terminal at Vancouver's airport. Greywell was well known to police. In 2017, the RCMP gave a public warning that he was a risk to public safety because of his connection to ongoing gun violence in Surrey. Police also said Greywall was close to high-ranking United Nations gangster Jimmy Slice Santu, who was deported back to India in 2016 for criminality. After the shooting, the killers fled in their stolen SUV, even shooting at police, while trying to get away. The SUV was later found burned out in Surrey. A BK member later posted a cryptic message on Instagram suggesting that Greywall was killed in retaliation for Hart Dalibal. 
The most recent shooting, number 15, happened on May 13th in Burnaby, after BK gangster Jasper Kalkat was gunned down at a cactus club after 8 p.m. Police say two of the people he was with, a man and woman, were also targeted in the shooting. The restaurant was busy at the time, and innocent bystanders said they had to die for cover once the gunfire started. Yo, they got so much footage, yo. It's been six months since the gang war started, and it honestly Man, doesn't cool, seem like crazy. there's any end in sight. We still have the entire summer left, and summer is normally when crime rates are their highest. But the police and government have also said they're working hard to stop the violence. The government has hired four additional prosecutors to put gang members behind bars, and are also looking at legislative changes that will help them crack down on the gangs. Well, this one. Okay, okay, okay. Damn, I did not know... I didn't know it was like that in Vancouver. I wasn't even thinking about Vancouver. What is, what does BC stand for? I don't want to say British Columbia. Is it Vancouver, British Columbia? I don't know, but y'all niggas dropping bodies over. I never heard nothing. And this example, why I say, man, it don't matter. It don't. It don't matter where you're from. It, it, all right. So in different stances, it do matter where you're from. But in the just of the world, it's gangsters everywhere. It's hood it shit. It's killing. It's, look at this shit. These niggas was catching body day for day, literally. Like, running, fleeing from the police, blowing like some mafia shit. That's crazy. Shout out to Vancouver, man. Y'all niggas going through it up there, man. War in the 604. BC gang war, man. Um, y'all let me know what y'all think about this shit. This shit crazy, bro. I didn't expect Vancouver to be on that same crazy shit. Y'all let me know. Yeah. Yeah.